So almost two years ago, I picked up this brand new IBM X41 ThinkPad tablet on a whim for about 40 bucks, which seems like a steal. But open it up and take a look around, and we can see it's missing quite a few components. So I thought to myself, can I buy the other parts I need to complete this ThinkPad and finally get it working after all these years? Well, let's find out. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to a slightly different episode of Retro Renew. Today, we'll be taking a look at this gorgeous ThinkPad X41 tablet. Now, I came across this brand new yet incomplete X41 while looking for parts for my other ThinkPad, my beloved X220. I saw its listed price of $40 and bought it on impulse. This particular ThinkPad was introduced in 2005 and was one of the first laptops produced under Lenovo after its acquisition of IBM's personal computing division, yet it still retains that iconic IBM ThinkPad branding. I love the styling of these laptops and the price was so good I had to pick it up. So I got to thinking, well, maybe I could track down the missing parts and build a brand new ThinkPad laptop from 2006 in the process. So I hunted down a bunch of the missing parts like the keyboard and even got some upgraded modern hardware like this mSATA SSD hard drive. I also wanted to spec out the machine, so I got one gigabyte of RAM as well. Ultimately, I purchased quite a few items to try and rebuild this machine. And at the end of this video, I'll give an itemized breakdown of how much I spent and we'll see whether or not if it was worth it. At this point, I really only care if this thing works. So fingers crossed. Now, the main reason I wanted to buy an older laptop was so I can explore and use my IS Nitro emulator for the Nintendo DS. It connects to a PC and uses software that runs natively on Windows XP. Now, of course, I could have easily purchased a working XP machine for cheap, but I thought, where's the fun in that? Why not build a PC where we have no idea whether or not it works? Anyway, all jokes aside, let's see if we can do just that. So this thing really isn't missing too many pieces and shouldn't be hard to get working. And thankfully, the major mechanical parts like the hinge mechanism for the tablet seem to work just fine. So with that being said, let's take a look at this area where the keyboard should be and tackle our first item on the list, the CMOS battery. Being about 17 years old, this thing is surely dead. So being proactive and replacing it, especially while the keyboard is out, is a good idea. It's removed very easily, being held in place only with a piece of tape. Once removed, I went ahead and connected the new one while reusing the tape to secure the battery to the chassis. Okay, so far so good. Now that the CMOS battery is squared away, I can install the keyboard. It simply connects to the laptop via this LEGO style connector on its ribbon cable. When firmly seated, we can now drop in the keyboard which simply snaps into place. It may take some massaging, but it'll eventually click in. Great, now we need to flip the laptop over and secure the keyboard to the laptop with a few screws. Since neither the keyboard or the laptop came with the screws for this, I had to buy a screw set for the X41 laptop, which only costs a few bucks on eBay, and you can see right here organized by size on this magnetic organizing board. Anyway, using the appropriate screw size, I went ahead and secured the keyboard in place, which was easily identifiable by the nice keyboard markings that you can see here. Okay, now let's install our single one gig RAM module into the laptop. All right, that was easy. Now, another part that the laptop didn't come with was this bottom cover, which again, I was able to find brand new on eBay. It simply slots in and is secured with three screws that are already attached to the cover. Now let's prepare our new hard drive. First remove these two screws on the standoffs. Then grab the 128 gig mSATA SSD and insert it into the adapter. And then fasten the two retaining screws back onto the standoffs to secure the SSD. Okay, this is the finished package, but now we need to insert it into the laptop, which is a bit challenging since I don't have the hard drive caddy for this computer. But with a bit of patience and persuasion, I got it into the system. Okay, so now that we have the computer pretty much put together, let's see if it'll power on with the battery. It's basically been sitting there for over a year, so I wasn't particularly hopeful. And yep, no power. 
Let's take the protective LCD cover off and then plug it in. Okay, we have some signs of life, which is good news. And it does appear to power on and post, which is great. Here we can see that it does indeed register the RAM we installed, which interestingly enough is 1.5 gigs, even though I only put in a single one gig module, but we'll get into that later. We also now know it comes installed with a 1.6 gigahertz Intel Mobile M processor. Now there were multiple configurations for this model and it appears that the CPU that I have was more on the high end versions, which is great news. Anyway, let's see if we can install Windows XP. So while I was purchasing parts for this computer, I actually also got a great deal on this period correct, new old stock ThinkPad writable CD drive, which looks really nice and will come in handy when we get to the OS install. So after unpacking the drive and connecting it to the laptop, I began installing XP without any issues. After it completed, I quickly realized it was near impossible to find, let alone install the drivers required to really get the full functionality of the machine. Like for example, all the tablet features. Additionally, this particular ThinkPad actually shipped with a special tablet version of XP. So I was actually able to track down the recovery files for this exact model. The only catch being it's all in German. Anyway, after doing the recovery process on this X41, I had a fully working Windows XP machine. Well, that's not entirely true. There are a couple issues which I will get into in just a bit. First, let's take a look at the machine and see what features it has. Along the right side of the laptop, we see it has quite a bit of IO. Here we have the PCM CIA slot, a microphone and headphone jack, an SD card reader with an infrared transceiver right below it, which allows you to connect to peripherals like a PDA. We have a USB 2.0 port, as well as an RJ45 Ethernet jack and RJ11 jack, presumably for a regular modem. Around back, we don't have anything except the place for a rather large battery. And on the left side, we have the power port, a VGA connector for an external monitor, and another USB 2.0 port with a smaller 3-pin connector that provides power to certain peripherals. Now, something that's really interesting is that this laptop features 512 megabytes of RAM built into the motherboard. Remember back on the BIOS menu, we saw 1.5 gigabytes of RAM available, even though we only put in a single one gigabyte module into the system? Well, again, that's because it has RAM soldered directly to the motherboard, meaning we didn't even have to install any RAM at all. Now, looking along the LCD bezel, we have some cool quick access buttons on top for when we're in tablet mode that allow us to perform various functions quickly. And right above those is the TFT display, which is actually not that bad looking at all. It's 12.1 inches diagonal with a resolution of up to 1024 by 758. This is behind a Wacom made digitizer for use with a stylus that I unfortunately don't have, which brings me to some of the issues that I encountered when rebuilding this computer. First, like I just mentioned, I absolutely could not source the stylus for this exact computer, which isn't too big of a deal, but I would like to get one at some point. Another issue is that the hard drive is actually just floating there and isn't really secure. This laptop didn't come with a hard drive caddy, nor the cover, and this is something I'm hoping that I can design and maybe perhaps even 3D print later on. Another issue is the battery. It's completely dead and won't take a charge, which again is a pretty huge bummer. I'm hoping I can get this battery refurbished somewhere, but I don't really have too much experience with that, so it's something I need to do a little more research on. And the last issue, which really is more of an annoyance, is that whenever I turn the computer on, I get the infamous 2010 error, which basically means that the hard drive I'm using isn't approved by IBM. Essentially, every time I turn on the computer, I get the error, which is accompanied by two loud beeps. However, this can be easily fixed by updating the computer BIOS with a custom one, which I do plan on doing. And besides those issues, this is a really fantastic computer and it's in excellent condition. But was it worth it in the end? Probably not. I could have easily bought a used, good working condition XP machine, but I thought this would be a fun project. Anyway, this brings me to the topic of cost. So here's the breakout of everything I purchased to get this computer up and running. About $190, almost 200. Yikes. Now that doesn't even account for the other items I bought like the CD drive, battery, and floppy drive. These added an extra $117 for a total of roughly 306 bucks. And the battery doesn't even work, I caramba. So definitely a pricey project, but like I said, it was fun to get the machine up and running again. And it works great with my IS Nitro emulator, but that's for another video. So in the end, would I do this project again? Eh, the answer is probably not. 
I was initially attracted by the low price of the laptop body, but definitely didn't account for all the other add-ons that I would need to eventually get the machine up and running. Now, looking at it from another angle, this is definitely an immaculate example of an X41 tablet, so I definitely plan on holding onto it for the long run. But what do you all think? Was this a good deal or just a waste of money? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.